How do I how do I say this? Hello and welcome to the Drive Check Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Cole. I am coming to you today with a standard Grand Blue deck profile. Um, so uh, it's not the greatest. <laughs> like it, it's it's Night Rose, and Night Rose is great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I am doing things a little bit differently, and I normally do things just a smidge different than the um, the standard build for Grand Blue. And I'll kind of go over that when I go through the deck list. But uh, yeah, we're gonna let's go ahead and start. Uh, so this is your starter. It's whoever you want. I want to keep uh, Grenache with Night Rose. Also, this deck is max rarity because uh, I don't count RL Rummy Lair Rap. Rummy Labyrinth Rares as Max Rarity because that's just, that's insane. And I also don't like that art that much. So, uh, SPs for me are Max Rarity. And uh, this deck is Max Rarity. It's the only deck I own that's Max Rarity. Alright, so, uh, just your starter. Any starter will do. But like I said, I keep Grenache with Night Rose. Let's just set it aside. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do four, four Night Rose. Uh, because Night Rose is the main focus of the deck. Night Rose is really good because, oop, uh, similar to her G counterpart, she uh, enables multi-attack. And multi-attack in V is really good. Uh, especially if you can get uh, four or five attacks in a um, non Axel clan. Uh, <clears throat> Grand Blue is Protect, which means we are not Axel. So any, any form of multi-attack in Protect is super strong. Um, plus, uh, she gives uh, all of your units uh, who attack and uh, who boost 5,000 power. So that could be a ten, an extra 10k to a column, which really matters. Uh, it's part of the reason why she can hit uh, so strong. Also, mid-battle phase, when she attacks, you can counterblast one. Oh, sorry. You can counterblast one uh, and call two units to a, up to two units to a column. And then uh, you can, uh, and then if she is uh, fighting again, if your opponent's uh, vanguard is grade three or greater, she gets plus ten k when she attacks. So by herself is a twenty two k attacker, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, so like there are a lot of combos that you can en enable, and uh, I'll go through them more when we actually get there. But uh, this is the bread and butter. If you're not on Night Rose, you're not playing the deck essentially. So you always want to be on her. Uh, there are a couple ways to fish her out, but we'll get there in a sec. Uh, oh yeah, the second grade three. I'm only running two right now. Oops, uh, two right now. This is uh, Dragon Undead Skull Dragon. Uh, this card is the card that gets two thousand power for every card in your drop zone, uh, and that's <laughs> that's pretty big. Uh, yeah, that's uh, basically enough said. You can ride it. You never want to ride it. If you're riding it, you're losing. Um, also, you can't normal call it, which is actually kind of a problem. Like This card's not new. It's been around since the first wave of Grand Blue and V era. But um, you cannot discard it to guard. Like You can't throw it out on the guard circle because technically that is calling it to the guardian circle. And its first ability says from the hand, this card cannot be normal called. So you can't call it that way. The only way to get this into the drop zone in order to superior call it is by discarding it. So discarding it with a protect gift or discarding it with, sorry, not protect gift, but uh, a perfect guard. Or um, there's uh, a couple of cards in the deck that have a discard as a requirement. So that's pretty neat. You can use it that way. Uh, now we move on to the grade twos. And from Butterfly to Moonlight, which is the most recent set, we got... An absolute monster of a card in Columbard. Uh, that way. Uh, Pirate Swordsman Columbard. Uh, Columbard is just is so good. Um, literally, I can search my deck for anything. Counterblast one, search your deck for anything, and then put uh, put it in the drop zone, and then you get to call something, anything that you want. There's no restriction on it. So um, you literally can search your deck for. Let's say Night Rose. Put her in the drop zone if you need to uh, ride her, which we'll get to the very next card. 
uh, you can do that. You can get uh, my favorite play though is Columbard, uh, and I'll search my deck for I'll ride Columbard. Search my deck for uh, Ghost Ship, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, discard the Ghost Ship, and then call the Ghost Ship. So grade two, I get a a pretty chonky attacker, and also lets me draw a card. So that's my that's my favorite play to do with Columbard. But literally, Columbard can get you anything, and Columbard can call anything. Uh, that's um, I don't know what else to say. Oh, uh, actually, the most important part about this, it's a hard once per turn. So you can only use his effect by the same. Uh, you can only use. Let me just read it verbatim because I screw up on that. This ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn. So I can't use two column birds in one turn. <clears throat> Alright, next card is... Three, Greed Shade. The Greed Shade used to be the best card in Grand Blue. Um, I definitely think it's the second best, but I don't think it's the very best right now. I think column bar just kind of does... A lot more uh, but greed shade is still super good uh, greed shades ability is uh, one place you can discard a card from your hand so discard <clears throat> the um, the skull dragon or the storm ride ghost ship which I think is the next card that we'll talk about uh, but yeah you discard any card from your hand and then you can uh, mill two cards from the top of your deck and then you can grab any card from your drop zone and add it back to your hand. So that's how you recycle your PGs mostly. Uh, your Sentinels is how I'm, I'm going to use Greed Shade to recycle all the Sentinels. Or anything else that I just absolutely need to use. Uh, Greed Shade is super great. Also, he has another ability. If you have 10 or more cards in the drop zone, he gets plus 5k during your turn. So couple this with Night Rose and he becomes a 19k beater. Which, uh, nothing to laugh at. Nothing to laugh at. Alright, uh, but yeah, I'm only running three because, um, I don't need it as much as I used to right now. I could easily bump that back up to four, uh, when we, and a little bit, like, how to change cards out. But I think most lists I'm seeing it as, uh, three or four. I just chose three. I like it at three. Alright. Another super great card for the deck. This is Stormride Ghost Ship. And he has the same uh, effect that Skull Dragon has, whereas he cannot be normal called. So I have to discard him. But his second ability is when it attacks, it gets plus 15,000 uh, until end of the battle. And then at the end of the battle, you ret uh, draw a card and then retire this unit. So he comes in at 20. Well, he attacks for 24. And then with Night Rose, it becomes 29. So that's uh, that's even even more annoying. Um, but yeah, this, this card's a beater. It's also how your biggest draw engine as well. Uh, it uh, Its stipulation for drawing a card is just at the end of the battle. So it doesn't matter what it attacks as long as it attacked. Uh, so you can clear out rear guards with this. That's generally what I'll use it, especially if I'm trying to uh counter blast deny so i can still draw my card and clear out a rear guard because who wants to throw down um let's say they're generally probably gonna be nine to ten k who wants to throw down a 20k shield in order to stop this it's kind of ridiculous so generally that's how i clear out rear guards and i'm running two because like i said columbard searches it out um and like it's not a problem i really only need one um anything more than that's getting a little greedy <laughs> greed chain but yeah i really only need two i might bump it up to three but the reason i'm not bumping it up to three is because i'm playing a real stupid card uh negro lazy this is a witch doctor of langur negro lazy and it's a grade two where its ability is uh one placed on the vanguard or rearguard circle you can you may call a grade zero specifically from your drop zone to the rear guard circle, and uh, any normal person would say, "Oh, the card is not super great." There's not a lot of grade zeros that you want to use in Grand Blue, except I run two Chappy the Ghosties. 
and Chappie's ability is on the uh, rear guard circle or guardian circle when placed. If your drop zone has 10 or more cards, this unit gets power plus 10,000 and shield plus 10,000. So that means that he becomes a 20k shield because he is a, uh, a 10k uh, shield unit. Or he becomes a 15k attacker, but with Night Rose, he becomes a 20k attacker. So I can, with Night Rose, let's say I call, um, I don't know, let's call a ghost ship. Oh, let's do it for you. Call a ghost, nope, that was for you. Ghost ship. <laughs> and then lazy, I think. No, uh, uh, no I want this. Wait, no one do it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing this upside down, so it's a little weird. But, oh, wait. There we go. That's, uh, we got there. We got there. Okay. Anyway. Um, go ship. He'll attack. N uh, Negro Lazy isn't going to do a lot by its, you know, as a boost. But I can call a Chappie over here. And Chappie swings for 20k as well. So, I'll draw a card. Get rid of that. Boom. And then I have Chappie up here. And then next turn, um, I can move Lazy up. And then I can attack with it. It becomes a 14k. So that's generally going to be my first attack column. Um, I'll do that. I'll clear off the other column if I put anything there. And then Night Rose will swing. And then I can call off full field, basically. Um, I also can call... Just straight up call... Uh, negro lazy from my hand there's no preference on when it, where it's placed from and if i have uh chappy the ghosty in the drop zone oh yeah i'll go ahead and i'll play it behind negro lazy and then i can swing and this becomes a 34k column so uh it's 14 for uh negro lazy and then it's 20 from chappy as he boosts so that means that is 34. And 34 means your opponent has to hit three triggers on a force uh, thing, a force gift or whatever, for this attack not to go through. So that's pretty free. Also, doesn't cost a counter blast. And then they're gone at the end. So, boop, they're gone. Uh, I'm doing two and two because I like, I really like having the option of it. I think I might drop a Negro Lazy. Um, f probably for, maybe for another Ghost Ship or a Greed Shade. Not sure. I kind of really like it at two. Um, Chappie, I, I like this card in this deck a lot. Uh, it's a little, little gimmicky, a little meme but I think it's versatile. Can I say it? Yeah, versatile. That's pretty good. Alright, uh, so two grade ones. We're gonna go with three uh ripple banshees and ripple banshee is real good because ripple banshee is how i get key cards that i had to ride out of my soul and then also lets me draw a card so uh one place from drop zone uh soul bless one draw a card and it gets 4k power so that means it's a 17k uh booster or attacker so that's pretty neat also um i have done this play where I'm on Night Rose, and then I just I need a little bit more attack pressure, so I'll just throw down a, a Ripple Banshee from my hand, so it doesn't get its effect. However, uh, it does become a 13k attacker, so I can swing with that first, and then get rid of it, and then I can use Night Rose to call it back. Soul Blast one, draw a card. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things that Ripple Banshee enables. Uh, also, a 17k booster, nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty solid. But I'm running three because you really only need three. Um, because I just keep recycling it. So I don't need to max out on it. It's not that important. It's just a really nice piece to have. Alright, uh, here is kind of what makes the entire deck sing. And this is... Skeleton Sea Navigator. I think this card is a sleeper. Uh, well, maybe not necessarily in the States anymore or in the West. But um, basically, I can rest two rear guards and mill the top five of my deck. 
that's it. But it's pretty nice because I really only have to do it once or twice to get to 10 cards. And I have, with Columbard and other things, I have selective mill, basically. So I can, I don't need as big of a drop zone as before, which is also the reason why I'm only playing two Skull Dragons because the amount of cards in the drop zone doesn't matter. It's the quality of the cards in there. So I want my Columbards, my Greed Shades, my Skeleton or Storm Ride Ghost Ships, just like my key cards that help me uh, either uh, swing for really high damage or just like straight up draw me cards. So it's really good. And uh, th while the deck is a little bit slower without them, it can still uh, handle its own. But this just kind of turbos it. And turboing is pretty nice. Especially if you're a drop zone clan. So I'm running three. Most people are going to run four. But I had to make a little bit of room for the Negrolazian Chappie. So that's why I'm only running three. Also, another really good card in this deck, which I didn't think about before, is Dancing Cutlass. <laughs> yeah, right here. Dancing Cutlass, four copies because uh, it's really good. Uh, from the drop zone, I can bind another Dancing Cutlass. Uh, so in premium, it's kind of interesting that it spe specifies Dancing Cutlass. So I can use the old one too. So I generally, if I'm going to use the old one, I'm doing like three new and one old for four copies. Anyway, um, so uh, you bind another copy, mill the top card of your deck, call us to the rear guard circle, and counter charge one. So this is my only way to counter charge in this deck, uh, besides healing. Uh, <laughs> so it's really, really good. Also, it's another body on the board. Uh, and Night Rose's um, biggest weakness is... I need to fill my board in order to do anything. So I need ways to, during the main phase, fill my board in order to attack and have any field presence, basically. So this is kind of my key way of doing it. Um, so yeah, it'll call itself. Uh, it mills one card, which is pretty good. And yeah, and with Night Rose, it becomes an 11k. So I have used this to attack rear guards. I'll just straight up call it, try to snipe a rear guard. If they guard it, cool that's one less card in their hand um uh to guard my bigger attacks coming through um also like like i said 11k booster i can put it behind dancing cutlass not dancing cutlass sorry uh columbard and columbard becomes uh 25k which is pretty sweet if i put it behind a skeletal ghost ship that becomes uh or storm ride ghost ship that becomes what's 40 40k so there's a lot of, this card is actually really good in this deck. It opens up a lot of plays. Also, if your opponent tries to counterblast an IU, uh, all you got to do is make sure you have two of these in the drop zone. And you have at least one counterblast open for Night Rose. And if you use Night Rose and then Negro Lazy, then you can call Chappie the Ghosty, and that's a 20k. Like, I can use, I can almost build a full board with one counterblast, which I think is probably the strongest part about this deck also if your opponent tries to damage deny you and you still need to build a board might i introduce witch doctor of powdered bone negro bone i hate these names but uh we're here and this card's really good uh from the drop zone i can discard a card from my hand so like my skull dragons like my uh dancing cutlasses if i need them in or um, uh, Storm Ride Ghost Ships, basically anything that I need in my drop zone, this is a way to get it there. And then uh, I put this card on the bottom of my deck. So I discard a card, put them at the bottom of the deck, which helps with my uh, deck out. And then I can call a grade one or grade, or grade one from my drop zone. But if I have 10 or more cards in my drop zone, then I can call any grade. So this is how I can get any card I need basically um, there's only like one time where I'd never had uh, enough cards in my drop zone in order to do that his ability to call anything but I can still call I can call a uh, a navigator storm ride ghost or um, 
a Ripple Banshee is a grade one, so I can draw a card and Soul Blast off of that. Um, Dancing Cutlass can call itself, become a, a nice booster. Like, there's a lot I can do with it. Uh, but for a rare, I think this is just insane. I think this honestly probably should have been a double rare, but uh, easily one of the best rares in that set. Um, actually, I think I think the the Pale Moon uh, Dragon at grade four. I think it's just a regular rare too. If that's the case, that's the best rare. This is the second best rare. Anyway, uh, it's really solid. He literally can open up anything. If your opponent counterblasts, denies you, boom, there's your, there's a card. So there's a lot of things to do. Um, that's all of my grade ones. Um, I'm not running uh, Chappie the Ghosty Brother, or not Chappie, Tommy the Ghosty Brothers, because I, I have ways to get my grade threes into my hand. I draw a lot. Um, I don't really need to check the top. Uh, the chop five for it and then you know discard a card I don't need to do that I have other things that I can do uh, Tommy would become an 18k booster or attacker which is pretty nice and I definitely think that there's a spot for him um, maybe not right now not in this build but I definitely think in the future there might be something for it but you just you you want to have your navigators out you want to uh, turbo your drop zone as fast as possible, which if you turbo your drop zone, you can get things like Greed Shade, Columbard out, and then there are ways to, you know, get that Night Rose back to your hand. Sometimes it costs a lot of resources, so it's not always worth it. Just something to keep in mind, though. All right, then we're going to move on to the triggers. And first up, uh, also, actually, I'll just show you. I'm running two... Uh, Sentinel, Crit Sentinels, and two Draw PGs. Um, I think this is the split that you want. Um, some people uh, do tech in Dolph the Ghosty, the grade one, uh, you know, when ridden, draw a card, discard a card. That PG, <clears throat> which I think is also a really good card, but um, I don't run out of my deck too often, so draws aren't a bad thing. Also, a one-card guard for almost anything is really nice. Plus, I'm a Protect Clan. I'm riding and getting uh, Protect Gifts, which are PGs anyway, uh, Perfect Guards anyway. So, um, you know, I, I feel more comfortable with this split. Um, yeah, that's, that's my... I think 2 and 2 is the way to go, personally. It's a very safe option. Both are recyclable with Green Shade, so it's pretty solid. And then the rest is four crit. Actually, sorry, eight crit. Eight regular vanilla crit. I just do the uh, Night Spirit and R Rough Seas Banshee because I like those arts. And then four heal. And the only reason I'm running heal in this deck is because I really want to counter charge. I can blow through my, uh, my counter blast pretty quickly. So I would like... The opportunity to counter charge the heal is you know nice but more often than not i mill it so it's kind of a, a moot point at that but yeah this is my grand blue deck profile it's a little unorthodox but that's how i like to play grand blue i don't like you know bog standard uh standard i don't like like the regular the most competitive version it's a little it gets a little boring sometimes so this is Night Rose. Um, I'm very happy that she's back. She was my all-time favorite deck in any game that I've ever played. So being able to have her back and finally being able to max rarity her, uh, it, it makes me feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I feel really good about this deck. It's a ton of fun to play. There's a lot of combos to have, um, a lot of decision trees to go through. But uh, that's about it. Uh, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. And I kind of want to have a, a discussion on why you think my deck is awful. Um, I can't. I'm not great at defending myself. It's just fun to me. Um, so yeah, uh, comment, like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. And I have a couple more 
videos in the works. Let's see if I actually have time to record them and upload them because that is the struggle. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.